We understand it was a little different this morning. We hope you don't mind. But sometimes different is good. Sometimes being in a rut, sometimes is really not what you need. But sometimes you need to come out of the rut. And praising God is a great way to do it. The freedom of a God, wherever God is, wherever the spirit is, there's liberty. Liberty to worship. Liberty to praise. Liberty to give him glory. Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, as I come before you today, asking that you move me out of the way, God, and that you have your way today. Speak through me, Lord. Let it be a tongue of a ready writer, God. Let me say what you would have me to say, that it will not fall on deaf ears, God, but that it will accomplish that that you have created in your word. God, I thank you today for open ears, open hearts, and open minds. God, I thank you that I am ready to do your will. Use me as a vessel, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I don't know how many of y'all like me. Sometimes, you know, when God says something to you, you want confirmation. Sometimes you just want him to kind of tap you on the shoulder and say, it's okay. That's what I said. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to worry that you're going the wrong way, but that's what I said. So, so as I'm going to pick up my baby this morning, there's a church that I have to pass by and they always have a sign on what do you call that thing outside? Deb, Deb you work on What do you call that thing? Marquee. Marquee, thank you. <laughs> they always have something on the marquee. So I'm driving by, and it was like a, a, a ray of sunshine or a boom hit me to read the marquee this morning. And it says, this month's study is on Nehemiah. And I said, okay. So guess what my message is on? <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Confirmation, praise God. So, so when, when God and I was talking about this message, he reminded me of, and y'all may think I'm wrong, but I know that I'm right, Wednesday night service. This past Wednesday night was different. We say that sometimes. Why is it different? Because we're doing different. We're moving differently. And, and, and so he reminded me, and and and. The Nehemiah message was about a week or so ago that something brought me to that passage. And I hadn't looked at it anymore until yesterday and then things started falling into place. So I don't know about you, but I get my messages kind of strange. I don't get like a phone call from God. You know, I don't, I don't get those kind of things. But he triggers something in me prior to me speaking and I either have to jot it down or, 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 or copy and paste or I have to do something to it to hold on to it. And then after I do that, then he says, okay, that's it. So, okay, let's, let's, let's go to Nehemiah, praise God. We're going to start with Nehemiah 2, 2 through 4. And I may jump around and I may not uh, read it per, verbatim, but I'm going to read it how I got it, okay? Because, you know, like there's a message Bible that kind of just speaks straight to your heart. You know, so so bear with me, praise God, but the message is from God. I, I promise you that. So Nehemiah 2, uh, 2 through 4 says, when Nehemiah approached the king of our Texas, that's not it, but that's as close as I can get, for permission to rebuild the wall, he was very much afraid. So, but the question today is, sometime when God, not sometime, yeah, sometime when God asks you to do something, asks you to move in a different way, asks you to do something different in your character, asks you to do something that you're not used to doing, sometimes do you do it afraid? As long as you do it. So, so the verse says that Nehemiah was very much afraid. And it says, before he asked the king for his favor, Nehemiah prayed to the God of heaven. God answered Nehemiah prayer. God answered Nehemiah's prayer, and he was encouraged. I tell you, when I, when God answers your prayers, it's an encouragement within itself. And, and the reason that I say that is because I'm gonna go back to Wednesday night when I share the testimony, and then I get back on track. So, so Wednesday night, I was telling the saints, I said, I have been praying for something since I started my women's ministry for years. 
And, and sometimes I would get a nugget, sometimes I would get a nugget, or sometimes I would run after somebody else thinking that that's what I need, and they're who I need, and they're not really all by who I need because they're never there. But anyway, so, so I kept praying, God, I need this one particular thing. I, I believe if I had this one particular thing, I could move differently. I could do more for the ministry, and I can go to more people who are in need. So last week I get a text from somebody and they say, hey, I got this person who needs to do some volunteer work. Uh, do you have something that they can do in your ministry? I said, yes, God, because I knew the person. And so when that person come to me and they started telling me, you know, what they needed to do for their ministry, and then I started telling them what I needed, and I kind of laid it out on the table before them, and I was so busy that day that I could not give them direct attention but I just kind of left it with the host that they would understand and, and, and know what I was trying to say. And bless the Lord, they did exceedingly abundant more than I could ever ask for, pray for. And I said, God, I thank you. The thing that I've been praying for for years. See, sometimes my prayers is not going to be microwave. Sometimes it's going to, God got to know, do you really want this thing? Is it really going to enhance your life or is it going to make matters worse? Is it going to make you serve me more? Or is it going to pull you away from me? See, because sometimes my prayers may be selfish. But I, I promise that prayer wasn't selfish, but I just needed help. And so, so God sent that person, and they'll be back Tuesday, you know, praise God. And, and But it was something that I needed in the clerical realm, in the social media realm, in the articulate writing, typing kind of realm, but I just could not do it at the time. And, Still do what I do. And that person did it so well, I was astonished. But God answered the prayer. That was the whole testimony. Not that what they did for me don't mean nothing. It's that God saw that I needed it, but he was going to send it at the time that I needed. The actual person that was going to do it was going to be effective. And then I would know that it came from him. So I was encouraged as Nehemiah was encouraged. It says, before he asked the king for this favor, Nehemiah prayed to God of heaven. God, and four says, God answered Nehemiah's prayer, and he was encouraged. From that point on, Nehemiah relied on God through prayer. Nehemiah relied on God through prayer. Not himself, but in prayer. So I'm going to, going to jump around on, in Nehemiah 6, 1 through 3. So the book of Nehemiah offers great inspiration as we look into the life of this diligent servant of God. Nehemiah's work ethics, focus, and dedication to the work of God was unquestionable, and he remains faithful through the threats and much opposition. So again, that, that hit home. It's like, okay, sometimes when things get hard, I want to stop or I want to give up or I want to say I can't do it. But what God is saying right there to me and probably to you too is you can't stop. Through opposition, through hurt, through pain, through people, through trials, through tribulation, when you're working for God, you can't stop. If God called you to it, y'all heard this before, he'll bring you through it. So, so through threats and, and intimidation and Nehemiah kept going, you and I also will be challenged as we put our hands to work for the Lord. It's a given, no doubt. Don't worry about it. No doubt in my mind that it's, a, it's, a, it's something that's going to happen. The word of God says trials and tribulation come to make you what? Strong. <laughs> And I know most of us can say, well, I can do it without a trial or two, but it comes to make you strong in God. It comes to make you strong. So as I was reverting back to Wednesday night, we're, we're challenging ourselves to do something different. And you know, one thing I like about saints in this church is we can tell you to do whatever, but if it don't come from God, you ain't going to do it. Praise God. Keep it that way. But, but, but one of the saints asked me this morning, you know, I might have missed a thing or two, so help me. Well, what were y'all saying about, did y'all hear from God? Did y'all, did, did you share this in the direction that we need to go in this, this new season in our lives as a church, as we work together? Can you kind of break it down for me? 
And I just said yes. And the reason that I know it's from God because it's in the word of God. And I reminded them that Paul and the disciples went house to house. And as they went house to house, what grew? The people grew. As we go out of these four walls, we're going to meet people, see people, touch people, pray for people, love on people, heal people. But we're going to do the word of God in living form. Deb said, when tonight, she said, let your life, let what you do be a living track. Because you can pass a track and then do something wrong to, okay, we're going to leave that alone. She said, let your life be a living track, praise God. The walls of Jerusalem, Jerusalem was broken for 90 years. And I don't know why, Christina, when I read that, I thought about you. You ain't do that, did you? Okay. The chief is on the mind, you know, the teacher. Anyway, but the walls of Jerusalem stay broken for 90 years. The Lord put it on Nehemiah's heart to rebuild it. See, that's what we're getting ready to do. We're rebuilding the ministry. We're doing things differently. We're going stone by stone, step by step, ceiling tile by ceiling tile, not naturally, but spiritually. And so God and Nehemiah together, God gave Nehemiah the vision, Nehemiah did the work. And in 52 days, they had built the wall. But he said that he went through trials and tribulation. He went through people, attitude, comments. You know what I'm saying. You've been through it. When you think you're doing good, but somebody else got a different opinion of you. Praise God. But in 52 days, the community and Nehemiah built a wall that was broken for 90 years. And I tell you, most of us don't have 90 years. We might not even have, okay, 52 days. But I'm just saying, while we are yet in our right mind able to do the will of God, we got to start working. The work never ceases. God's will, his way, and his direction never changes. They stayed on course no matter what the opposition faced, they faced. We have to build a wall, and we need each and every one of you in this room. We're going to pull you out. We're going to call upon you. We're going to meet with you. We're going to tell you that your gifts and talents is needed in the house because we're getting ready to build a wall. One of the most powerful messages of Nehemiah is that he accomplished the assignment and the plan that God had laid out. That he accomplished. What has God called you to? What has God called you to do? What is your Nehemiah message that God has given you years ago, months ago, days ago? He's waiting on you to complete that assignment. Nehemiah and his followers do what seemed to be impossible because they are doing what God has called them to do. You don't have to rebuild the wall to do God's will, but we have to do God's will. And sometimes we think that God's will is preaching, teaching, evangelizing, bishoping, apostleship. No, that's not always God's will for you. That may be God's will for someone else. But Nehemiah had a, a great job. But he stepped down from the position that he had because he had to build a wall. Meaning he put God first. Nehemiah led an example, giving, a, giving respect to the position that he had. But he knew that it was going to be hard. But what Nehemiah had to do, he had to humble himself. Because I'm quite sure he got direction from others. I'm quite sure somebody had an opinion. I'm quite sure there was some naysayers in the house. But I believe that no matter who Nehemiah, Nehemiah listened to and what Nehemiah was trying to say, Nehemiah was determined that I'm going to do the will of God that he has given me to do. And I can say that for myself. I'm going to do what God directs me to do. Rather be in this house or out this house, rather be in Africa, New Mexico, it doesn't matter. God, send me because I want to do your will. 
First Peter 5, 5 through 7 says, Likewise, ye younger, he was talking about me. Likewise, ye younger, <laughs> submit yourself to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be subject, be able to hear from your sister or your brother. Be able to listen intently to what somebody has to say. And be able to humble yourself and say, maybe I was wrong. And move forward. But it goes on to say, subject one to another to be clothed in humility. For God resists the pride and give grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Oh, you may not get your way. It may be something that you don't agree with, but just cast your cares on God. He'll make it right. Cast your cares on him and join the community to move forward. Join the community of God and just move forward. Nehemiah, after he was done, he did not claim glory for himself, but always gave glory to God for every success that he has. God gets the glory. We can do nothing without him. I can't do this without him. I can't heal without him. I can't teach without him. I can't live without him. I give him glory. Resist the pride in doing God's will. Because I tell you, it's going to come. The trials and the tribulations are going to come from man. But we can't stop. We have to continue. <laughs> you know, I, I am Pastor Phil's associate pastor. But I tell you what, I don't know if I want to trade praise with him. <laughs> He's our Nehemiah. Because he has the vision and the direction that God has given him. And I tell people all the time, not just bragging on my pastor because I love him, but I've never met a man so humble. I've never met a man who cared about people. I've never met a man, and he, we've had some hard conversations with him as a church body and me and him one on one. <laughs> And we didn't always agree. But he never made me feel like you're out of place. You don't know what you're talking about. God didn't tell you that. I'm the pastor. Never. And so I can follow the Nehemiah vision that this man has. And the vision is one of Robbins, the America. Thank you, Rodney. And the world. You just have to figure out what part belongs to you. Follow the vision. Make it plain. And let's come together as one. This is a scripture God gave me when I started my ministry. And it's probably the only scripture that I know of that I can read or remember verbatim. Well, I know God so loved the world. But anyway, now, it's Joshua 1.9. And it says, whew, I don't know what's up in that ceiling, but when I go back to edit my videos, I'm always looking up at the ceiling. Okay, God. It says, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. And again, I tell you, sometimes when things get hard and, and people start working on your last nerve, it comes like a force and it says, have I not commanded you basically to
to do my will. To do my will. <laughs> to do my will. So I'd rather fight you than fight him. Okay, I'm just saying that. He says, be strong and of good courage. Because I'm with you. He's with you. Matter of fact, he goes before you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. But Nehemiah exhibited a steadfast determination to complete the goals that God had set before him. He wasn't weak kneed. He knew. And, and, and you know in the word, when you go back and read Nehemiah, it tells you that they laughed at him. Just like they laughed at Noah. They make fun of you. They tell you you don't hear from God. But you know you hear from God. You know you can tell by the life that you live that God is still there. Oh, I don't care about it being rough. Because there's no place that you are that God cannot create a way of escape. That's what the word says. But he was determined to accomplish his goal regardless of what he heard from people. Now this is the, this is the, the one that I just, yes Lord, I just knew, I just knew, I just knew that this was the word for the day. Nehemiah states, I am doing a great work so that I can't come down. So, so what does that mean if you don't know the book of my, the Nehemiah, what he can't come? Nehemiah was building the wall. And, and, and the people and the naysayers and the gossipers and the haters were saying, Nehemiah, come down. We want to have a board meeting. Nehemiah, come down. We need to talk to you. Nehemiah, come down so we can tell you how we feel about what you're doing. Nehemiah said, I'm doing a good work for God. And I can't come down. He was building God's wall. You're building God's kingdom. And when the naysayers say, come here, let me tell you something different. You say, no, I can't come down. I'm doing the will of God. Oh, I'm doing a great work, Nehemiah says. We should never leave the work of God to answer the false charges against the Lord or of us. Don't matter what they say. Don't matter when they say this negative. You can't come down. You're doing the work of the Lord. You're building his kingdom. And you have to be kingdom minded, not church minded. If you go out and get somebody saved and they join somebody else's church, praise God. If you go out and get somebody healed and they don't belong to this church, praise God. The kingdom of God is greater than the building. The kingdom of God is what's going to last when the walls of the church come down. Nehemiah showed godly leadership. We can't do the Christian life alone. We need each other. Nehemiah needed a kingdom to build the wall. He couldn't build the wall by himself. We can't continue this church by ourselves. We need you. Your commitment, your dedication, your talent. We need you to help build this church and to build God's kingdom. God reminds us that we need to get around like-minded people, those that love him and those that love others. Because if you don't have love, you don't have God. You may have religion, but you don't have God. If you can't forgive, you don't have God, you have religion. If you can't love your sister and your brother, you don't have God, you have religion. Love God first and then love others. That's the only way the kingdom is going to be built out of love. God wants us to be able to speak life to those that we come in the path and let them understand that righteousness belongs to God and we're offering you his righteousness. The, the, the hour coming and now is that we will know him like never before. We will be pushed in the times where nothing else matters but getting to the throne room of God. Oh, wicked generation, what has happened to you? Oh, wicked, diverse generation. 
that serves man and not God. That wants to listen to things that sound good, but don't want to give up what they know is wrong in their hearts. That God is saying, you got to let it go. You can't move forward with that. You got to release it. Allow me. Allow me. Allow me. Understanding that you don't have to be a minister to do the will of God. Deacon, elder, teacher, preacher. God's will go further than a title. You don't have to have a title to do God's word. I just come to encourage you to take the limits off of what you're doing and allow God to move as far as the kingdom as he wants you to go. Colossians 3.17 says, have this attitude about work. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, to God the Father. So whatever you do, you may count it to be small, large or small, but whatever you do, do it like God is looking over your shoulder. Do it like God is saying, amen, baby. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. I'm with you. You won't fail. I won't let you fall. Work for the Lord in the kingdom like God is pushing you to do his will. In conclusion, <laughs> I know y'all glad to hear that. Nehemiah chapter 10 teaches us the importance of keeping our commitments to God and remaining faithful to the word. Faithful to the word. As you move, as we go forward, as we build the wall, we're going to do it with the word. We're going to do it with prayer and understanding, and compassion, and love, and growth, and temperance, and meekness, and patience, but we're going to build a wall. Matter of fact, I see that coming up that wall right back there. Meekness, temperance, patience, love. We're going to build that wall. Praise God. It is important that we strive to uphold God's standards. Be good stewards of his resources. And hold ourselves accountable to him. Hold ourselves accountable to him. And one more person. Because <laughs> sometimes you need somebody to remind you, no, you can't do it that way, Levada. Levada, check your attitude. Levada, watch your mouth. Let's pray. You need an accountability partner. Because you need someone to encourage you when you get tired on the way. You need somebody to say, we can do this together. You need somebody to say, when you're down and out, girl, can you pray with me? Get you an accountability partner. But understanding that the first accountability belongs to God. The Holy Spirit is the best accountability partner you can have. Because he will tell you when you're going wrong. And he would encourage you when you're doing right. Trust the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. And then he will direct your path. The story of Nehemiah shows that God blesses the work of those who work faithfully. Amen. Amen. By your hands. Father God, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. I laid it on the altar, God, and I ask you that you allow it to sink in. <laughs> that it would not fall on stony ground, but Lord God, it will fall on good ground. And Lord God, that we will be encouraged to do your will and do your work, Father, that your kingdom will come. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you anoint each and every one to do the will that they have, you have called them to do. That they will be blessed beyond measure because you are leading and guiding them into all truth. God, we thank you, Lord, as we build your wall. And that as we go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come, Lord God, it says that your spirit will draw them. We ask that right now in Jesus' name. We ask that you bless and keep 
those that are not here for whatever reason, that you bless and keep our pastor and his wife in their absence, and that you strengthen their bodies, and that you keep them strong. And Lord God, anyone from the sound of my voice that's, that's discouraged right now and need communication, need somebody to talk to, need somebody to pray with God, have them to call us, 478-922-5153, we ready for you. Bless you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his grace to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift.